Well, good afternoon, Trinity Baptist family. Uh, greetings to you on this uh, Wednesday afternoon, the middle of the week, the last week in January. And I'm so grateful that uh, you joined with us here in the middle of the week for our prayer time together. And I uh, just wanted to take an opportunity to share a few minutes with you this afternoon from God's Word as we take a few minutes to be able to pray together and uh, just remember the needs of our church family and uh, those that uh, you know of that we need to be lifting up before the Lord in prayer. Uh, you know as you get this email, hopefully you'll be able to download the uh, prayer list that is attached and you'll have that to uh, spend some time looking over the needs of our church family as you uh, bring those concerns before the Lord this evening. And uh, it's just so important that we are praying for one another during these days, uh, praying for our nation, uh, praying for where we are, uh, where God uh, at these very moments uh, wants us to be uh, as a nation and that we as his people uh, recognize uh, his call upon our lives and the responsibility that we have. You know, this past Sunday as we were in the Sermon on the Mount and just really beginning uh, our journey through the Sermon on the Mount, I told you that uh, Jesus begins that passage by really giving sort of a, an overview of and that would have blown the minds of the hearers that were hearing as he talked about happy is uh, and over and over when he uses that word blessed are the poor in spirit and blessed are they that mourn and on down through the beatitudes that word that he used would have been a word that talks about divine joy divine happiness that which could really only be experienced by God couldn't be experienced by humans. And, and so when people heard that, they came to, to think that this was something new that they had never heard before. And of course, he was talking about the divine joy that he could bring, the divine peace that he could bring to a life, the divine happiness that he brought and could establish in the heart and mind of a man or a woman who really and truly came to know him. So this morning, I really wanted to spend a few minutes just talking with you uh, on this middle of the week message about what it means to, to really experience and know this joy and this happiness. Over in 1 John in chapter 4, there's a passage that we find uh, down beginning in verse 7, actually, is where I want us to begin reading. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation or the payment for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he's given us of his spirit. And we've seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. And whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, well, God abides in him, and he is in God. Now listen carefully to verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. You know, I heard something many years ago, and some of you have heard this before as well, that really for a person to be happy, they need three things. They need something to do. They need someone to love. And they need something to look forward to. Now think about that for just a minute that we need, we need something to do. And, and, and that, that really is true. 
We need to have a purpose. We need to have some work to do. We need to have some things we need to accomplish. Maybe helping others. Maybe getting something done. Something that, that really is meaningful and fulfills something. But secondly, we need someone to love. Maybe it's a spouse. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's somebody that, that is very special in our lives, a child that God has given us. But someone that, that we love, that we can come alongside and, and share life with. But also it's important that we need something to look forward to. Maybe it's a break you're looking forward to. Maybe it's the weekend you're looking forward to. Maybe it's a vacation. Maybe it's you can't wait to get to church on Sunday. That's an exciting thing to look forward to. But, you know, it's been said we need those three things for a person to be really happy. But if you stop and think about it, all three of those things are found in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's really what we're talking about in 1 John chapter 4. When you think about it, we find here in 1 John chapter 4, the something to do. As believers, all of us have been given gifts by the Holy Spirit. And we're to use those gifts to edify the body. We're to use those gifts to bring glory to God. And as we use those gifts, man, he gets incredible glory. As, as people are moved and as the body of Christ is edified and, and built up for all for his glory. So, in other words, there's something to do when you're a follower of Christ. In fact, we are told to be his disciples, and we're to share Christ everywhere we go. So we've been given something to do. But, you know, there's also someone to love. We're told right here in the Scripture that we're to love God, and we're to love others. We know that for a fact. We know that God is love. Certainly, we know that love is not God. We make that mistake in our culture. Oftentimes, people misspeak and, and make that mistake and say love is God. No, God is love. He is a personification of love. We can look at him and we can see the real meaning of this agape love, this love to the greatest degree, this sacrificial love. That God loved us so much, the Bible says, that he gave his only begotten son to pay the price, to be the propitiation, the sacrifice. But while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So there is someone to love in that personal relationship with Christ. You love God. You love Christ Jesus, our Savior. And he gives you that love for other people because of the special love, agape love, he's placed within your heart. Ah, but definitely, definitely as a believer and follower of Christ, there is something to look forward to. Listen, this world is not our home. We talked about it Sunday, that, that really and truly, that Jesus touched on it in those closing verses of the Beatitudes that we talked about Sunday there in the Sermon on the Mount in the last part of that first, very first section where he talked about this world persecutes those who are believers and, and because they don't understand us. And truthfully, we don't understand them because they've never really understood the power of Christ and they've never understood the forgiveness of sin. And therefore, the world is broken the world is lost and it cannot be healed and the world will never make sense until it experiences the power of Jesus Christ. And so we have the promise, the clear promise that we have lots to look forward to. One of these glorious mornings, the Bible says the trumpet of God will sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord. And uh, we shall be gathered together in the air for all eternity. You know, I don't know where you are today. I don't know what your situation is that you're facing today. Some of you may have some real pressures going on at work. 
Some of you may be under some real pressure at home. There may be some struggles in your family right now. There may be some circumstances that you're really dealing with depression. You're dealing with some personal struggles brought on by this whole pandemic that we've been dealing with for nearly a year. And it's really beginning to eat at you. Well, listen, I understand. But Jesus has made it clear that he brings a divine hope. He brings a divine happiness that isn't based on our circumstances. But he does give us something to do. He does give us someone to love. And he does give us something to look forward to. And you know, most importantly, he gives us a foundation upon which to build our lives. And he's told us right here in the scripture, very clearly, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Would you pray with me as we go to the Lord this evening and you take your prayer list out and I hope you'll spend some time in God's word on your own uh, following our time here and uh, especially praying over the needs that you have on your prayer list here tonight. Father, I thank you again for the privilege of just being able to um, spend a few minutes with our Trinity Baptist family. Lord, just to be able to, to find a word of encouragement in your word, to have our hearts lifted up, and, and Lord, to know that in a rapidly changing world and a rapidly changing environment, that there is a foundation that has been built in our lives by the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the hope that you have built in us, for our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And I thank you, Father, for the way you have ministered in these particularly difficult times that we're living in. I thank you for the way that you guide our footsteps. I thank you for the way that you are using each of us to be instruments in your hand. Lord, I pray for our families today, for those that are, are dealing with some physical situations right now. I know, Lord, there's some on our prayer list that are, are struggling with COVID itself. And then, Father, there are those that are, are struggling with cancer and have been dealing with, with issues around cancer that are dealing with treatments right now. And, and Father, that, that while the COVID crisis has been front and center, that uh, many that have been going through uh, an ongoing battle with cancer, Father, we, we just want to lift them up to you right now. For, Father, we know that um, the stress and strain has continued to be there for them. And I just ask you to bring comfort, to bring your grace, and to bring your strength. I pray for those that have, have been through tests in recent days, as even they get ready to get the results of those tests, that you would just bring comfort into their hearts, that you would be near them, that you would be close to them. Lord, give doctors and nurses that you have placed in their path the wisdom and discernment to uh, see what they need to see, Lord, to have great clarity uh, in the results of the test so that they can uh, prescribe, Lord, the, uh, the plan of treatment that would be most effective that you would choose to use. Lord, we know that, that really with a simple touch of your hand and Lord, with a very word proceeding from your mouth that you have the power to heal if that would be your choice. But Lord, we recognize that that you have purposes that you fulfill and you have plans that you fulfill. And however you choose to do it, Lord, far beyond our own physical uh, being, Lord, we trust you with our whole lives, our body, our spirit, we placed in your hands long ago. And we are depending upon you just to guide and to guard us in how you choose to fulfill your plans and purposes in each of us. And Lord, I just thank you again for the way you, you walk with each of us each day. And I, I pray, Father, as we come into this uh, coming Lord's Day, that you would just prepare our hearts for the, the opening of your word. Lord, that uh, we will know what it is to lift praises to your name, that we will know what it is to be able to intercede for one another and to just pour out our hearts that we might grow deeper in our walk with you. 
that we might grow closer, Lord, in our understanding of who you are and, and what you desire from us. And Lord, even as we, we talked about in, in recent days, God, help us to just be so close to you and to see your glory so fulfilled that we understand what it means to live in your presence day by day. And thus, by living in your presence, that there creates such a hunger and a thirst in us for your righteousness that we would cry out as Moses did in Exodus and say, oh God, let us see more. Let us see more of your glory. Oh dear Father, please create that in me. Create that in every one of us in the Trinity family that we want to see more of your glory on display day by day. And Father, I pray that you continue to use us in this community. I pray for our food drive that we've got going on right now. I pray that you would keep that in our minds and hearts as, as we just uh, pick up extra items and bring them in that, that we might be able to share them, uh, meet the needs at the food pantry that are, are feeding families that are, are coming up short uh, in their food needs. Father, please, uh, just help us to be instruments of your grace in these days that, um, that we might share through your love and through your power, Lord, to show your grace and to show that, God, you are love, the real agape love that changes lives and impacts communities forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for our time of prayer here this evening. Thank you for what you're doing in each of us. And just continue to guard us and guide us as we serve you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you again for being with us. And um, we look forward to just uh, walking with the Lord through the balance of this week and the opportunities that he puts before you, that he puts before me. And may we just be found faithful. Don't forget, bring in something this, this coming week uh, along the soup lines or canned meats or crackers for the soup as uh, we continue to help out the South Yadkin Baptist Association Food Pantry and our food drive here at Trinity Baptist. God bless you. Have a great day.